So to create a rope brush like this, first we need to activate the grid and the snap to grid feature. So go to view, then go to show grid, then go to view again and snap to grid. Now zoom into the grid, pick the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle from one of these crosshairs right here and make it three squares tall and one square wide. Now pick the ellipse tool, hold down the shift key to draw a perfect circle and draw a circle from this corner right here down to this corner right here, making a circle that fills out two by two squares. Now create another one from this corner right here and all the way to this corner right here, making another one that fills two by two squares. Now pick the selection tool, select all the shapes, pick the shape builder tool, hold down the alt key to get this minus sign next to the cursor and subtract this shape right here and also this shape right here. Then pick the selection tool again and delete the two circles leaving only this shape behind. Now you can select this shape, make the stroke wider and give it a color that you like. I will select a light brown for the fill and a dark brown for the stroke. You can select whatever colors you like. After coloring the shape, hold down the Alt key to duplicate and put down the duplication right here, making it exactly one square to the left and also one square up. Then go to view and uncheck snap to grid, then go to view again and hide grid. Then select both shapes, hold down the shift key while rotating the shapes and rotate them 45 degrees. Then pick the rectangle tool again and draw a rectangle from this anchor point right here. Make sure you see the anchor text and drag the rectangle all the way to this anchor right here. And once again make sure it says anchor. Now pick the selection tool, hold down the alt key and expand this rectangle up and down until it's taller than the rope. The exact size doesn't matter. Then right click this rectangle, go to arrange and go to send to back. Then deselect the stroke and also deselect the fill. Select all shapes plus the rectangle, go to object, go to expand, make sure fill and stroke is checked and click OK. Now we need two more copies of this shape. To do this, go down a bit, then simply hold down the alt key to duplicate and create two duplications. And to repeat the duplication, simply click Ctrl D. So now we have three of this shape. And we need three of these shapes because we want to create a beginning of the rope, a middle of the rope and an end of the rope. So let's start by creating the beginning. For this, simply zoom in to this one, pick the selection tool, select the entire shape plus the invisible rectangle, then pick the shape builder tool. And because we want to create a beginning, we want to get rid of the right side of the rope. So hold down the ALT key to get a minus sign next to the cursor, then go just to the right of this rectangle right here, without touching the rectangle. Now subtract all the way down here, like this. And here we have the beginning of the rope. Now go down to the middle section. Once again, pick the selection tool, select the rope plus the invisible rectangle, pick the shape builder tool, and this time we want to create the middle of the rope. Therefore we want to delete both the left side and the right side of the rope. Then let's go down to the last section, select it again, pick the shape builder tool and you probably guessed it, this time we want to delete the left side of the rope. Then let's zoom out and here we have the free section of our rope. So now let's start by selecting the beginning and drag this to the swatches panel. Then select the middle, drag this as well and the same thing for the end. So here we have a beginning, a middle and an end. Now go to the brushes panel, select this drop down right here, select new brush and pick the pattern brush, then click OK. This is where we want to build our rope brush. So select the beginning right here, the start tile and for this we want the lowest number. And as you can see it can seem a little bit confusing because this don't really seem to be a start tile, but it will be. For the end we want to select the highest number and for the middle we want to select the middle number. If this way is a little bit confusing, you can also just go to the swatches panel before creating the brush and rename all these swatches or tiles to start, middle and end. But if you just follow this, it will work. And the tiles we made were quite big, simply so we could use the grid. So to make the brush smaller, we can simply scale it right here. Something like 25% I think will work. Then click OK. And now we have our new brush right here. So let's try it out. And as you can see, it works perfectly. 
even if we use it with shapes. Thank you for watching.